Hey good people, ever felt like there was more to Australian politics than you're being told about? You're not alone. While the big names dominate the headlines, there is a whole world of smaller parties hoping to be discovered. Do you want to make the big parties think you might leave them? Maybe they'll do that thing you want if they see you taking an interest in another team. Stick around and I'll introduce you to five more parties in just two minutes. The Greens. The Greens are basically socialists. They care a lot about the environment, climate change and social justice. I actually have a lot of respect for the Greens. Even though they don't understand the basics of economics, they actually stand by their beliefs. And that's more than most. Plus, they recognise what impact they can truly have on political discourse in this country. They know they can't win and make Adam Bant Prime Minister. But what they can do is stand by some of their hardcore convictions and force the government to move a little bit more their way on a few select issues. The Greens want guaranteed jobs, a rapid transition to wind and solar, phasing out coal and gas, a million government houses, and to spend huge amounts of public money on schools, science, uni, and art, and plenty more. How will they pay for all the free stuff and handouts? Taxing the billionaires. It's a plan that doesn't work mathematically or practically as the Greens have underestimated their spending and overestimated their projected revenues. Plus, billionaires would just leave and take their money. They're not stupid. But all in all, you can actually trust the Greens to do what they say they are going to do. Whether you want that is a different matter. One Nation. Pauline Hanson's One Nation is essentially a nationalist party. Nationalism is identification with one's own nation and support for its interests, especially to the exclusion or detriment of the interests of other nations. Simply put, they care about Australia and Australians first, and basically nothing else. Really, they are the opposite of the Greens. They believe immigration is detrimental to Australia, drugs are bad, except for medical cannabis, Dole bludgers are rotting the system, vaccine mandates were immoral, and everything in Australia should be Australian owned. They also oppose increases to the GST and oppose to the reintroduction of inheritance taxes, which I didn't realise Australia ever had. Lately, One Nation has been gaining some popularity due to their online comic, Please Explain. After years of copying verbal abuse and insults, Pauline Hanson has learned how to lean into the jokes and make them her own. It seems she's learned how to turn her political punches into political punchlines. <laughs> Di Lee and Frank Carbone Network. It's probably the newest party out there, having only formed in 2023. I can't tell you anything about it because it was formed last year by Di Lee, a former Liberal member, and Frank Carbone, a former Labour member. They care about Western Sydney and that's their whole thing. Sustainable Australia Party. SAP Treasurer William Burke described the party as not left or right, but an independent community movement with a science and evidence-based policy platform. They believe they are the only party that puts the environment first, and their plan is to stop corruption, stop overdevelopment, and stabilise population. While the SAP believes they are distinct from the Greens, I've read all their policies, and I think they are basically the same party coloured in yellow and blue. They want to increase taxes, give out free stuff to their selected interests, institute an ICAC, implement a UBI, which is taxable, increase public housing, health, education, etc., all of which is pretty left-wing. The Greens and the Socialists want pretty much all of the same stuff. But there are a few areas where these guys have some unique ideas. For instance, they want to make superannuation optional to be paid as either extra wages or super contributions. I'd like that choice. There's this slowly growing idea of microgrids where energy storage is not centralised. And probably their most distinguishing feature is their plan to stabilise Australia's population by returning immigration to pre-pandemic levels of 70,000 per annum. But overall, I don't think they have a good grasp of economics. They know the lingo, but they are ignoring foundational principles. They use terms like hyperdemand on their website and in their videos. It's not a real term. They just mean a lot of demand. I suspect they've read books like Donut Economics, which is junk, because they believe in investigating modern monetary theory and providing jobs to reach zero unemployment. I can write a government policy to reach zero unemployment in about two seconds. 50% of you will dig holes, and 50% of you will fill in holes. There, we've reached zero unemployment, but what have we produced? 
It's not employment that matters, it's the production of wealth. The New Liberals. You can't vote for the New Liberals because they were deregistered late last year. Which is definitely for the best because they believe in modern monetary theory, which is a junk macroeconomic theory. The basic premise is that governments can print as much money as they want in order to pay for stuff, and if we ever experience inflation, they can just raise taxes to suck the money out of the economy, thus controlling inflation. The result would be that the economy is made up of things that the government wants and less of the things that you want. So grenades instead of avocados, headquarters instead of houses. This theory has gained more popularity than it deserves precisely because it says the thing that governments want to hear. You can print money and spend it on the things you like and there will be no repercussions. I'm sorry, but there is no such thing as a free lunch. If someone is telling you that you can have it all and it's free, they're either stupid or they're lying. And in this case, it might be both. Country Liberal Party. This is a slightly confusing sub-branch of the Liberal National Coalition. Members get voting rights with the Nationals and observation status within the Liberal Party. If that doesn't make sense, don't fret. They're essentially the blue-green team for the NT. Notable members are Senator Jacinta Price, and they're slightly better than the Liberal Party at not wasting your tax dollars. Apart from that, all their policies are about the NT. So why are they a federally registered party? To help the coalition. Well, that wasn't five. There was a little bonus in there for you. The Greens and One Nation are polar opposites on social issues, while the Sustainable Australia Party and the New Liberals both subscribe to modern monetary theory. If you want to learn about five more parties in just two minutes, hit the on-screen link. And remember, you were born free.